Thank you for coming. I know that you're very busy, but I need your help. I'm listening, sir. This island is vast, and we only know a tiny part of it. As you know, your uncle has asked me to draw maps to facilitate the merchant's travels. Alas, I'm slightly too old to be roaming the paths, setting up camps here and there. So I'd appreciate it if, as you travel, you mark the places you deem to be safe on your map. Very well. I will take care of it, Professor. Excellent. I knew I could count on you. Uh, one more thing. Do you remember that gigantic creature that you defeated in Serene? Uh, bringing a specimen to the city was obviously not a good idea. An accident was inevitable. But according to my sources, there are others of them on this island, and your uncle wishes to know more about them. I know that a scholar of the Alliance, Professor Serafedin, has also taken an interest in these creatures. I tried to contact him, but apparently he disappeared during an expedition to study them. Naturally, I cannot ask you to rummage through the entire island looking for him, but if you can find any trace of him, his studies on these giant creatures could be immensely useful. Very well. If I find anything out, I'll let you know. The road to knowledge is long and difficult, but this is the price of wisdom, Desade. Menawi. Why are you dressed like this? Hello. I'm not one of your people. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. A legate? Is that someone important? Indeed. I'm in charge of diplomatic relationships with other nations. So you'll be able to help me. My chief sent me to trade some items with your village. But there are these bod irony who do not want me to set up shop here. These what? Bod Irony, the Ironbacks, the warriors who protect this village. Every time I come, they take my items without giving me anything in exchange. Please, I don't understand how things work here. Very well, stay here. I'll try to clear this up. Adlo Redar on Olmenawi. May the earth always be sturdy under your footsteps. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I met an islander in the streets who was complaining to me about the guard's behavior. Really? It would seem that patrols have confiscated the goods he was hoping to sell several times. Oh, I see. Indeed, I've been told about this man. The problem, Your Excellency, is that our orders are strict. Merchants who do not have a patent ratified by the minister cannot sell their goods in the street. And since your islander doesn't have one, I doubt he even knows what it is, my men have no choice but to confiscate his knickknacks. I see. Thanks for clarifying that. I'll talk to the minister. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Minister. Your Excellency, it is always an honor. How may I serve you? I would like to talk to you about an islander who's trying to set up shop in our city. Since he doesn't have a patent, his wares get confiscated as soon as he receives them. And you want me to provide him with the said patent? I would be delighted to show you the procedure to follow so that we may study his request. You'll understand that we cannot give an authorization without having determined the value of the goods beforehand. We must determine the tax rate according to this value, determine the best emplacement for this business. In short, these things take time. A lot of time. I'm certain that my cousin will be delighted to hear that our relations with the natives are progressing in a significant way. And he will probably be very grateful to the minister who helped their first merchant to set up shop in our city. Perhaps, Your Excellency, but our governor wouldn't be pleased if I didn't determine the fitting tax rates. 
Minister, allow me to insist. Alas, your insistence will not change a thing. I heard your request and it will be processed. It is only a matter of a few months. Would you like anything else? What exactly is your role here? I am tasked with advising Governor Constantine about business matters. And I make sure that all business contracts are established properly and are favorable to us. I am responsible for setting taxes on goods based on their value, among other things. It is an exciting job that requires the utmost care. Would you like anything else? That'll be all. Goodbye, Your Excellency. I'd sooner set sail in a storm than try and convince this old fool. Any ideas how to change his mind? Sir de Corsillon knows all the subtleties of courtiers. He'll know how to convince him. Sir de Corsillon. The Sade, my young student. What can I do for you? I would like to enlist your help in making the Minister of Commercial Affairs see reason. Did our finickety Minister of Paperwork bother you? He refuses to speed up the procedure to create a patent needed by a native merchant. The poor man has already had his wares confiscated several times. Despite the fact that if he were given permission to set up shop in our city, it would certainly improve relations with our neighbors. I'm not surprised. This man really loves to lose himself in writing up pointless paragraphs. Let me write you a recommendation letter. He'll see my seal, and I'm certain that he'll become more compliant. Thank you for your help, sir. Don't mention it. Always delighted to help you, and to bother this annoying little man. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? Don't worry. I will take care of indexing the location suitable for setting up camp. Glad to hear it, Desade. I look forward to seeing your map. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? I found no traces of Professor Serafedin yet. That's most regrettable. But keep looking for him, will you? You never know. Can your old professor still prove himself useful? What do you know about Lady Morange? Laurine de Morange is a brilliant woman. The work that she has accomplished here is uh, remarkable. In that case, why did the prince strip her of her governor status? For political reasons, obviously. Allowing someone so brilliant to govern a distant city for too long is not without risks. She may eventually have whims of independence. What's more, the prince was looking for a position where your cousin could learn his responsibilities. This governor position seemed ideal. What can you tell me about the congregation's status on the island? Well, thanks to Lady Morange's excellent work, our situation is rather comfortable. Our young city is expanding, New villages and cultivations are starting to emerge, and unlike our neighbors, we have managed to develop rather positive relations with the natives. I hope that our new governor will continue in this direction. Looking forward to seeing you again, Sir de Corsillon. Minister. Your Excellency, it is always an honor. How may I serve you? I would like to have another discussion with you about the patent for the merchant whom I told you about. As I explained, these things take time. But I'm listening. 
Sir de Corsillon was kind enough to give me a letter addressed to you. A letter? Of recommendation, I suppose. <sighs> I see. I have no other choice but to accept your request. But I hope all merchants will not make use of the same special favors. Here's the patent that will allow your protege to legally pursue his activity in the city. You should give him this copy, the other one will be kept in the archives. However, one of my representatives will visit his stall for the estimation and to determine the tax rate in accordance with the... Thanks a lot, Minister. Looking forward to seeing you again. Would you like anything else? That'll be all. Goodbye, Your Excellency. You came back! Something terrible happened! What is it? I was just bringing you the patent you needed to set up shop. The Bod Irony came back, and they took my cousin away! He came to bring us animal pelts and new objects from the village. But the warriors came back. They took everything he was bringing me. And they also took him! Oh, I don't know what they will do with him. Please, bring him back to me. I don't see why they would have arrested your cousin. But I'll try to find out. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I've come to see you again to talk about the Islander merchant. I managed to obtain a license for him, but he informed me that while I was taking care of this, his cousin, who was making a delivery for him, was arrested. I'm sorry, Your Excellency. Especially considering you've managed to obtain an official authorization for him. I'm afraid my men ran out of patience when they saw this hunter making deliveries for the merchant again. They wanted to confiscate his cargo, but the lad resisted and... He was thrown in jail for disorderly conduct. If you want to set him free, that's where you must go. Sorry, again, Your Excellency. I should have known you'd managed to obtain the necessary license for your protégé and told the patrol. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Can I do for you? I'm looking for a prisoner, a native who should have been brought here recently. You're a bit late. He was sent to fight in the arena. In the arena? So this man was judged? Who pronounced the sentence? Whoa there! Do you really think that we would organize a proper trial for a savage? He attacked some guards. He's lucky he won't gun down right there and then. At least in the arena, he has a chance of survival, since apparently, he's a hunter. This man was only defending the goods he was bringing to his cousin. And now he has to fight for his life. I have no hand in this. I'm not the one who made this decision. They brought him here, and then they took him away, that's all. What did you do with the goods he had with him? They got confiscated, put in the storeroom, like all the rest. Anything else? I must leave you. This part of the establishment is reserved for regular customers who paid an entry fee. Sorry, but I can't let you in. In that case, allow me to pay the fee. We're delighted to have you as a regular customer, Your Excellency. Have fun. Good day, and welcome to the arena. Is this your first time? It is. Excellent. The crowd just loves to see new faces. So, are you ready to rise to the challenge? Or would you like a little reminder of the rules before jumping in? Unless, of course, you're just here to go over the basics and get in some practice.
I wish to fight alongside the island hunter that was captured. Really? You'd have to go in alone. Your friends will need to stay in the stands. Are you sure that this prisoner is worth risking your life for? This man has been the victim of terrible injustice. I cannot stand aside without doing anything. Well, oh, that's extremely noble of you. But it's just the sort of crazy idea that the crowd loves. <laughs> I have to warn you, though. If you want to fight now, you will lose your bonus in the running challenges. So, will it be? Justice cannot wait. I'm ready to fight. Excellent. In that case, the arena awaits you. You've won the affections of the crowd, and when the crowd makes a decision, it gets what it wants. You're free, prisoner. I owe you my life, on Manawi. Blessed be the winds that have blown you to my side. By what name should I address you? My name is the Sade. In fact, it's your cousin the merchant that sent me. Follow me. Let's go and find him. Ah, on Manawi. I'm glad to see you again. Oi, Ven! I'm so glad to see you alive! Then you must thank this Onol Munawi. He fought to save me. Thank you. May the grass always be soft beneath your feet. Don't mention it. I also brought back your goods. May the trees always bear you fruit. We owe you a lot. You should go see Ulan, the chief of Vignamri, my village. He wants to be friends with the Renaigse. Since you are a legate, you could talk to him. Desarde, I have a favor to ask. Very well, I'm listening. Do you remember the story of Jonah? Of course. Well, I'm like him. A donation to the sea. My family also gave me to the Nords. I don't know anything about my real family, except that they are probably affluent and from the congregation. When I was born, the Norts and the Merchant Princes had a complex relationship. I must have been used to settle a debt or forge a truce, but that doesn't matter. The mystery of my origins has now become an obsession. I need to know where I come from. If I were patient enough, I'd wait to become a fleet commander and then I would be told. But since being laid off, such a promotion seems somewhat improbable. And you want me to help you find this information? You understand correctly. The records of all seamen stationed on the island are in their respective ports. Mine must be in the harbor office in New Serene, and it must contain my family name. But if I go there, I'd be spotted right away. Could you go there and bring the file to me? Of course. But you will have to come with me to the port and tell me a little more. Right. Also, I don't want any knots to be hurt in the process. Despite my desire to know my origins, the Norts are still my family. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. Well, 
Kurti Dumad. I am Ulan, chief of the village of Ignamri. You have a peculiar face, and it looks familiar. I didn't know that people from the continent could bear the mark of the Onol Manawi. To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? I met a member of your clan in New Serene, a merchant. Oh, so you are the strange Anal Manawi, who helped and saved our hunter. I am very grateful to you. May the trees along your path always bear fruit. I knew the Renaik say could be good. And you proved to everyone that I was right. You are someone that the kings of the Renaik say respect and listen to. Are you not? As the legate of the congregation, it is true that I can talk to all the governors of this island. That is what I taught. I need your help to talk to the leader of the great city of Hikmet. About what? I want to meet him to offer a peace treaty between his clan and mine. The Sisaignemeis. Many kings want to chase the Renaigse away from the island. Especially the kings of Hikmet. But I know we could learn many things from them. And we could arrange a great deal. I see. I can indeed talk to the governor about your desire to make peace. If you do talk to him, can you also tell him that one of my clansmen has come to trade with his town? I sent him some time ago. But I was told that the soldiers did not let him in. He fears for his life. Because some other clans do not look favorably on exchanges with the Renaigse. He could be attacked at any moment, alone on the road. Very well. I will make sure that he obtains permission to enter. To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Tell me about your clan. We are called the Seasignemeis. The bone blowers, because it is in our tradition to sculpt Moramil bones. These creatures are the great kings of the sea. The whole island knows of our artisans. We trade with other clans a lot. And we also trade with the Renaikse, of course. Anything else? What can you tell me about your village? Vignamri means the king's bones. It is a very ancient village. It used to be one of the largest on this island, before the people of the sea tried to take Tiafredi from us. Some battles took place very close to here. Legend has it that this is the place where the first guardian fell and that this is the reason why our village was given its name. After the battles came the abductions and the ransacking. People used to disappear frequently. We were taught to be cursed. But I changed all of that, and I gave our clan its prosperity back. Anything else? What do you think of people from the continent? Many of our people would love for all the Renaigse to leave, but I would not. It is thanks to them that I was able to breathe new life into Vignamri. They have a lot to teach us. The Lions have powerful weapons and very effective potions. The Lugaid Blau, your people, offer us very beautiful things in exchange for our pieces of art. Lugaid Blau? Is this what you call the congregation? It means yellow eyes. Because there seem to be round yellow eyes on your flags. They're coins. And what does Teleme offer you? The men of the sun seldom come here. But their magic is powerful and so different from ours. I wish my brothers would understand how much we would benefit from an alliance with you. From making peace. Anything else? Nothing. I must go. Greenblood! There's something I would like to talk to you about. 
I'm listening. I recruited a young man for the guard a few months ago. Talented. Very talented. And honorable. I've been tracking his progress, and I learned that he's been sent to the barracks in New Serene. I would like you to meet him so that you can give me your opinion. My opinion? On what? Ever since our departure from Serene, I've spent nearly every second at your side. But I have clear standing orders to assure the protection of Constantine. And I don't know his guards. Not well, in any case. I see. You've been thinking this recruit might be a suitable personal guard? Precisely. And your opinion has weight. I can see that you're busy with some other matters. We'll see to this later, if you find a moment. Anything else? What is your duty as Master of Arms, besides teaching us how to fight? What was my duty, you mean? It's all in the past now. In truth, you may have guessed it, but my main role was to make sure that nothing would happen to you and Constantine. Without, of course, turning you into some courtiers that are afraid of steam. You have to be considered trustworthy to take on this role. But alas, it isolates you from the rest of the guards. Always at the court, but never really belonging to it. I spent almost my entire time with you without seeing my comrades. Anything else? Tell me about your family. Were your parents in the guard as well? Yes. And to be truthful, I never knew them. I was entrusted to a wet nurse, a prostitute, and followed the troops. I remember her. She was sweet and a good person. She may be the only one who showed me any kind of affection. But that didn't last. As soon as I could hold a wooden sword, I was given a real one and sent to training. Anything else? I must leave you. Here we are. We have a good view from here. The harbor office is well guarded, both outside and inside. Getting through the main entrance is impossible. There must be a blind spot. There's always one. You could dress as a knot and go through the back door, but someone may recognize you inside. I'll need to be much more discreet. A potion could help me. That is an option, yes, but since I'd rather avoid hurting any knots, I made some inquiries. The harbor office has an arrangement with Dieter from the brothel. Girls come every night with wine. I see. You want us to spike the wine so that they sleep during our search. It's a proven technique. And I can assure you, they do not sniff the wine before drinking it. Right. Let's get some sleeping pills. Then we'll go see Dieter. Yes, why? You looking to have a good time? It seems like you're sending girls and wine to the harbor office every night. So? There's no law against that, is there? No. And I'm not here to stop you. Listen, Dieter. We just wanted to add a secret ingredient to your wine tonight. What? Are you joking? Are you trying to slip a laxative in it? We were thinking more of sleeping pills. Nothing bad, you see. Listen, I have nothing against a little prank, but I can't risk losing my best customers. Captain Vasco is very influential among the Nords. Maybe he could help expand your excellent clientele even further. If you accept, I could arrange for your agreement to come to fruition. In San Mateus, for example. San Mateus? I would have to recruit. But yeah, that would be interesting. So then, we agree? Yes, that's fine. Tonight your friends will receive their delivery seasoned. Now, give me the sleeping potion. Thanks to Dita, you should be able to slip into the Harbour Master's office after dark. But you should still dress as one of us, just to make sure you avoid confrontation. Good idea. I'll see to it. It's pitch black. It's the perfect moment. Dieter's girls should be here soon. What do you want to do? We will wait for Dieter's girls to do their work as planned. Then we'll enter. Very well. It's definitely the safer option. Dieter's daughter is gone. Your guard should get a good night's sleep now. You should go. I'll wait here as planned. I can't risk getting caught there. Don't worry. I'll make sure not to hurt anyone. Good luck, Disardi.
I was able to recover your file, Vasco. And nobody saw me. Wonderful. You did everything perfectly. So, let's see what this file can tell us. So I was right. My real name is Leandra, son of the Darcy family from Serene. Nobles, I suppose. Yes. I must admit, I had no idea they'd given a son to the Nords. To think that I spent my childhood polishing ship bridges when I could have been wearing silk. I'm sorry for you, Vasco, but growing up in nobility is not as simple as it sounds. Really? Well, whatever. I've learnt my real name thanks to you, and that's what I wanted. Leandra Darcy. I remember coming across a Darcy at my uncle's court. Your brother, no doubt. My brother? What was he like? It was a long time ago. We were children. I couldn't tell you what he looks like today. A brother? I wonder if we are alike despite our completely different lives. Thank you for sharing this and for telling me about him. You gave me back my identity. This is more important than the Norts care to admit. Desarde, can I do anything for you? Do you wish you were never given to the Norts? How could I not be regretful? I never got to experience a mother's love or a lavish youth. Don't you have any happy memories? I do. Of course I do. For example, I remember the first time I climbed up the shrouds. The incredible view, the dizziness, the sensation of complete freedom. It was an unforgettable moment. I can only imagine how you felt. But it sounds amazing. It was. <sighs> I wouldn't trade that memory for all the gold in the world. Thank you. Sorry, You've given me a lot to think about. Did you want anything else? Have you ever heard about the Darcys before? No, I had not. As you know, there are many noble families in Serene, and there was a time when a lot of them had to give a child to the Lords. I don't remember your family very well, but I could try to tell you about them if you want. I would have loved to have met them, but I'm afraid that hearing about them may only reopen old wounds. You're a good person, Desarde, and I'm touched by your solicitude. Did you want anything else? I must leave you. Greenblood! Tell me, do you remember that young recruit I spoke to you about? I would still like to present him to you. So then. Would you like to accompany me to meet him? But of course, let's go. Desarde, I'd like to know more about my family. I need to know what became of them. Could you accompany me to see Lady Morange? I'm afraid that without you, she may refuse to give me any information. But I see you're already busy with something else. Come find me again when you're available. Did you want anything else? I must leave you. Good day, soldiers. Your Excellency. Captain. Soldiers, may we be of service. I'm looking for the soldier, Rayner. Is he in the barracks? I never heard that name before, Captain. Never heard the name, Captain. That's strange. I'm certain he was sent here. Maybe he's been moved since then. When was the last time you'd heard news of him? In Serene. Just before our departure. But that's been a couple of months. If I may, Captain, sh should I have a word with the Quartermaster? That's right, Captain. He has a register with the affectations of every recruit in the Blue Silver Regiment. Anything else, Excellency? Rank and assignment, soldiers. Recruit, First Class, Blue Silver Regiment, 8th Company, Your Excellency. The Blue Silver Regiment is made up of men attributed to serve the Congregation of Merchants. I'm one of them, and the 8th Company was sent to Tier for D, with two other companies. Anything else, Excellency? 
What is your charge? Maintain order in the city, Excellency. Anything else, Excellency? That will be all. At ease, soldiers. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I've been looking for one of my recruits. Goes by the name of Rayner. I would like for His Excellency to meet him. Rayner? I'm sorry, Kurt. I thought you'd been informed. Informed about what? He is dead. He was found, drowned in the port harbor day before yesterday. I was told he had too much to drink and fell in. I'm extremely sorry, Kurt. The young men drink more than they can handle when they're on leave. That's bollocks. That lad isn't the sort to sully himself with drink. I don't believe it. People change. When they're far from home, the lads have little else to do. I still don't believe it. Listen, you might as well go and ask the doctor down in the morgue. I might have misunderstood what was reported to me. Those doctors use such long words for simple things. Excellent idea. At least now you'll see it for yourself. You're right. Let's go. Is there anything else? Where did you say we could find the doctor? In the basement. The morgue. He hardly ever leaves the place. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Can I help you with something? We are here concerning the matter of Recruit Rayner. Are you family or friends? You could say that. I'm the one who recruited the lad. I see. Well, what I can do is tell you what I can. When was the body brought to you? Day before yesterday, in the early morning. Can you tell me anything about the circumstances? All I know is what I was told by the fellows who brought the body to me. They said they'd spent the evening together at the tavern, that they'd had a great deal to drink. A horrid habit the soldiers all seemed to share. Rayner was not a drinker. Maybe not. All the same, he was drinking that night. He stepped outside for a moment and never came back in. His companions found him drowned in the bay early morn. And they brought him to me. How then did he die, in your opinion? He drowned. I'm sorry. It's regrettable. He was quite a young man. Yeah, and his death makes no sense. He didn't drink, and he knew how to swim. All the same, that's what happened. I greatly regret it. Might we take a look at the body? Um... No, I wouldn't recommend that. To see your friend in such a state. I'm a soldier, Doc. I've seen a number of men in pieces. Let me see the young lad. I... I regret, Captain, I cannot allow that. I have as of yet to present myself. I'm Sir Desardé, legate of the Congregation of Merchants on Tiafredi. And as the title infers, I have the power to inspect this barracks and all that it contains. Therefore, I must insist. I see. A thousand pardons, Excellency. I should have recognized you and shown more respect. It's the body in the middle. Examine him if you must. But please be so kind as to not leave a mess after you. is just a boy. His face is still locked in an expression of pain. Kurt, is this your recruit? Yes, that's my Rainer. Poor kid. I should have left him with his family where he was. If you want to learn more, we'll need to examine the body. Is that all right? He's not the first young man I've seen with the lights gone from his eyes. Go on. I'm no doctor, but this boy doesn't seem to have drowned at all. It looks like he's been beaten. Oh, it's suspicious. 
The boy I knew would never have drunk himself senseless to the point he'd fall into the bay, I'm telling you. I believe you, Kurt. But if we want to prove it, we'll need to find more evidence. Excuse me, Doctor, but you owe us a few explanations. This boy did not die by drowning. It is absolutely the cause of death, I assure you. The science of death is a complex art, and you are certainly not a doctor. That is true, but you are. Do you recognize your own notes? Your writing is hard to read, but the word drowning never appears. Oh, what an idiot! I should have burned those notes. I am truly sorry. I, I swear I have never, ever falsified a report before. But I was given no choice in the matter. How's that? What are you talking about? <laughs> Two men, uh, lieutenants, I believe, brought a body to me telling me the boy had drowned in an accident. I saw immediately this was a lie, but I did not push the matter. I began my examination, planning to submit my report to the quartermaster as per usual. But the men returned. I was told to forget what I'd discovered, and say that he had indeed drowned, or else. Who were they? I have no idea. I had never seen them before at the barracks. I, I guess they're ranked by their uniforms. What colors were they sporting? None. They must have removed the emblems of their regiment. Listen, it's obvious that this boy was beaten repetitively, and that was the cause of death. I have no intention of suffering the same fate. Have no fear, Doctor. We will make no mention of your name. My condolences, Kurt. I'm truly sorry. I know the pain of losing a crew member. Thank you, Vasco. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? We have a situation, Manfred. Rainer didn't drown. The doctor falsified his report. He was threatened and feared for his own life. You have to be pulling me leg. Who bullied the crow face? Lieutenants that he didn't recognize, alas. And he wore no regiment emblems. Which regiment was Rainer assigned to? I would like to have a word with his commanding officer. Let me have a look at the register. My memory isn't what it once was. Stab my heart with a rusty blade. His name's been crossed out. Oh, if I catch the bastard that did that. What mess was the boy into, Manfred? What could this be about? Your lad was in the 6th or maybe the 11th, before being reassigned to who knows where. Just like that? You out of everyone have to know where the recruits are assigned. Not of late. This isn't the first lad who's been reassigned all of a sudden at the drop of a hat. Each time I start complaining about it, I'm told they've changed regiments. And it's not my concern. Something truly bizarre is going on here. I don't like this at all. Let's try and discover which company he was stationed at before this mysterious reassignment. Is there anything else? No, thank you. I need to get to the bottom of this mystery, Greenblood. I don't like being taken for a fool. Even if the lieutenants weren't stationed at these barracks, someone here must know where Rayner was assigned. We should also go and check the tavern. Men on leave will perhaps have looser lips than those within the walls. Good day, soldier. Uh, good day, my lord. De Sardé, legate of the congregation on Tierfredi. Captain Kurt. Oh, I... Excuse me, Excellency. I... I didn't know. Captain, I... I truly am sorry. At your service, my lord. Excellency. Since you know who we are, present yourself, soldier. Ah, yes, sir. Recruit 2nd Class Alric, Blue Silver Regiment, 11th Company. At your service. Anything else? You don't quite look like you've got the hang of all this. How long have you been in? I... Is it that obvious? It's quite normal for a new recruit. I joined up four months ago, but at the beginning we were on board ship, you see. 
I don't know if that really counts. I started exercises when we got to New Serene, but I'm making progress, they say. And do you like it here? I sure do. That's why I joined the Guard. To come here, to leave the continent. Know what I mean? I do. Anything else? Here, you seem tired and a little on edge. A drink would do you some good. It's just that... I don't know if I'm allowed. You're on leave, or you wouldn't be at the tavern. Then why not? Yes, but this is His Excellency's own bottle. I don't know if I can. Drink, I tell you. Now then, why don't you tell us what you know about Rayner? Well, I didn't. I didn't serve with him. Well, not really. We just crossed paths. He was leaving the 11th when I joined. Everyone said he was good, strong, and, uh, followed orders. And then, poof. Lieutenant got this order, and he wasn't happy. And I mean really quite unhappy. And then Rayner, he was gone. We never saw him again. We asked where he'd been sent, but the Lieutenant didn't want to tell us. Said that it was none of our business. But you, he won't be able to say no to you. You should go and offer him a drink, too. Where can we find your Lieutenant? At the barracks. Thank you. And watch yourself when leaving. Wouldn't want you to fall into the bay. That will be all, soldier. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Hello, officer. Excellency, can I do something for you? Could you tell me which company you serve? The 11th, Excellency. Anything else? What's your assignment? The 11th is assigned to road and outpost security for the congregation on the island. As for me, I'm responsible for the training of recruits and the patrol duty roster. Anything else? We are concerned about the death of a young recruit named Rayner. Let's be perfectly straight. We know that Rayner belonged to your company. And as the acting lieutenant instructor, you certainly had him under your command. So just stop with the lies. We've lost enough time here. You know what they say? Guard business is well guarded. And concerns only the guard. Now, unless you've lost your eyesight, you've a captain in front of you. I... I know. But this story is dangerous, Captain. If you have so much as an ounce of respect for the boy, speak to us. Don't you believe he deserves justice? Yes. Of course. But you have no idea what's been going on here. If word got round that I've been talking, come back after sundown, when there's fewer folk. Very well. We'll be back. <sighs> Anything else? Thank you, Lieutenant. Farewell. Your crew has the scurvy, Kurt, and they're dying from fear. I must agree, sailor, and I don't like it one bit. We are quite alone now. You may speak to us. Rayner was indeed a member of my company, and an excellent recruit. But you already know that. Continue. One morning, I got a note telling me he'd been transferred from my company. He'd received a new assignment. I was so furious that I did my own little investigation to see where he'd been sent. It wasn't easy. No one wanted to give me answers. No one seemed to know anything. But one thing's for certain. Rayner wasn't the only man to have disappeared. I learned that a good many recruits, all the cream of the crop, had been reassigned. And finally, I learned about the existence of a phantom regiment. What sort of nonsense are you talking about? A sort of secret elite company that were following a special training program. Where can we find them? I've no idea. I had to put my investigation to rest. Things were getting dangerous. I began to sense I was being watched. This regiment protects its secrets at all costs with few scruples. If you want to know more, the training officer of the Sixth might know something. It's been said that he took part in one of their missions alongside them. Are you certain you've nothing more to tell me about this infamous secret regiment? I've told you everything I know, at the risk of ending up like Rayner, Excellency. Go and see the officer of the Sixth if you want to learn more. 
and leave me alone now. Thank you, Lieutenant. Farewell. Good day, Lieutenant. Excellency, what's your pleasure? To where are you assigned? The Sixth Company is in charge of exploration and expansion of the colony of the Congregation of Merchants on the island. We operate mainly in the wilderness areas, in direct contact with the natives. But don't worry, we respect to the letter, Congregation, directives and standing orders. We avoid all confrontation with them as much as possible. Anything else? What company do you serve? The Sixth Excellency. Anything else? Tell me about the Phantom Regiment. About what? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, Your Excellency. I do know that it's frowned upon, even dangerous, to delve into the matter, but I'm curious by nature. So considering the risk you'd be taking to tell me what you might know, I'm in a favorable disposition to offer you compensation. That's a handsome sum. That might allow me to distance myself from this nest of vipers for a time. Very well. I've seen the regiment. Even fought beside them on an operation. On that occasion, our marching orders were kept secret until the last minute. We were asked to remove our regiment emblems. And our pay wasn't even recorded. And of course, we were ordered to speak to no one about it under any circumstances. <laughs> I hope you realize the risk I'm taking, talking to you about all this. Have no fear. We understand. What was this operation? An attack. A lightning strike on a caravan from the Bridge Alliance. Marvelous. A company that behaves like back alley bandits. I know. It really shakes up the honor code. The regiment is made up of young recruits, carefully chosen. Only the best make it through. The training is extremely arduous. And my guess is that Rayner isn't the only one who's died from it. I know that they set up camp just outside the city, where the men live and train. But I'd be at a loss to tell you precisely where it's found. Sorry, Captain. Thank you, Lieutenant. This story is making me sick. Poor Rayner. If I'd have known, I'd never have recruited him. I'm sorry, Kurt. This isn't your doing. But these filthy phantoms, or whatever they are, are gonna have to settle the debt. Believe me. You do realize that your own commander is certainly involved in this on some level. Outright clandestine operations could not have taken place without his approval. That he's aware of the existence of the regiment, there is no doubt. That he approves of what they're doing. It wouldn't be the first head that didn't know what his hands were up to. What do you wish to do now? I'm gonna find the location of this camp. I have a few friends that can certainly help us. And when I know where to smoke out these bastards, I'll go and have a few fiery words. If you were of a mind to accompany me, two of us would not be too many to make sure they settle their debts. Let me know when you discover where they are to be found. You can count on me. Good day, Lady Morange. Do you remember me? Of course. So de Sardé, isn't it? I hope that you and your cousin have grown to like it here. But I have little reason to believe you have paid me a visit to exchange civilities. Can I be of service? What can you tell me about New Serene? It's a new city whose construction began not long ago. When I arrived five years ago, there was just a port, a fence, and some huts here. The businesses, the barracks of the guard, the palace, and all of the houses sort of sprung up from the ground. To see how impressive it is today, even if it is still far from its majestic mother, is incredible. Of course, with such expanse, all kinds of bandits, drunkards, and other lowlife have arrived. But I'm very proud of it, in spite of everything. I hope that your cousin continues this work. What do you know about this island? Much less than I would like. The land is still wild and extremely rich. Its soils are full of minerals, some of which are unknown to us. With regard to the flora and fauna, you've probably seen how different the creatures and plants are here. The islanders protect their land fiercely, and we cannot begrudge them that. When you see what we have done with our own, well, such a source of richness attracts greed. You seem interested in the islanders. As a matter of fact, I find their culture fascinating, but I can't say I know much about them. 
They are quite secretive and protect their cult and traditions from the curiosity of strangers. I know that their sages, they call them Donegada, are the guardians of their rituals as well as of the island. They have very strong links with nature and the creatures that inhabit it. They're also good healers. I could talk about them for hours, but you will learn more from the islanders themselves. What can you tell me about the relations we have with other nations? We play a difficult role, caught between these two enemy nations who are nonetheless our allies. The smallest action could tip the balance and draw us into their conflict. If I may offer some advice, be very careful. We do not want a war to break out here. My lady, I have to go. Goodbye. Desarde, I'd like to know more about my family. I need to know what became of them. Could you accompany me to see Lady Morange? I'm afraid that without you, she may refuse to give me any information. All right, Vasco. Let's go see Lady Laureen Morange. Good day, dear sir. Happy to see you again in such fine health. How can I be of service? We would like to have some information regarding an important family, the Darcys. Well, I could tell you many things about them, but I suppose that you want to know something in particular? Are there any members of this family on the island? Indeed, Bastien Darcy, the son of the family, has been in New Serene for some time. Last I heard about it, he was doing business. But that doesn't help in knowing where he is. The Darcy's first attempt at establishing themselves on this island wasn't very fruitful, but I seem to recall that since then the son has found a competent associate who's been working here for a long time. Perfect. Could you tell us where to find her? Of course. Ask for a Madame Clerk near the warehouses on the port. That's where she normally is. I hope the Darcy's are not in trouble. Don't worry, madam. Their name was simply mentioned in some business discussions. We are thinking about becoming associates. We would like to know more about them to form an opinion. If you ask me, you should forget this idea, Your Excellency. Their son is a poor business partner. Why do you say that? I do not mean to speak ill of him. Perhaps it would be better for you to form your own opinion. Well, thank you for your help, madam. Can I help you with any other matter? My lady, I have to go. Goodbye. Can I help you? Are you here to do business? Are you Madam Clerk? We would like to meet with your associate, Mr. Darcy. Bastian? I don't know where he is. I can't say that he often graces us with his presence. You don't have the slightest idea where he is? I am not his caretaker, you know. You don't seem to hold him in high regard. Listen, my relationship with my associate is no one else's concern. And if you didn't come to do business, well... We must find him. This man you can see by my side is his brother. Do not insult my intelligence. I know that the Darcy's only have one son, alas. You can see the Nort tattoos on his face, can't you? And a merchant like you must surely know about the Nort's recruiting process. So it is true. The Darcy's gave away one of their children. I find it hard to believe. He was supposed to go to Hikmet to deal with one of our clients. But I didn't receive any news from him after his departure. And given his tendency to get himself into impossible situations, I didn't try to get any. Who is this client? His name is Ferrat. You'll find him in the Alchemist District. Uh, I'll write this down. You think something may have happened to him there? His mission wasn't very complicated. He had to pay for a valuable shipment and take charge of it. But with Bastion, anything is possible. Thank you, madam. Halt! Your names, titles, and business at hand. Sir de Sardé, emissary of the Congregation of Merchants on Tier Fredi. I have come to present my regards to your governor. Your papers seem to be in order. Welcome to Hikmet, Your Excellency.
Hello, sir. Is this the house of the man called Farad? It is I. What can I do for you? We're searching for Mr. Darcy. He was supposed to come here to do business. Yes. Yes, he did come here, but I don't know where he is. <sighs> to be honest, our exchange did not exactly go as planned. And if you are his associate, or a member of his family, know that you owe me a large sum of money. How so? Well, this Darcy fellow came here to take the shipment, and he was supposed to deliver me a promissory note. Which never arrived, I imagine. How could you let him leave with your merchandise without payment? Well, he's the son of a very well-known family. I did not deem it necessary to try and obtain more guarantees. What if something happened to him? Nothing happened. At least I don't think so. Why should that concern me? I'm not his brother. He owes me money, and I do not have the slightest idea of where he might be. I suspect that you're not telling us everything. Oh, uh, come on. If you have not come to repay his debt, leave me alone so I can work in peace. Greetings. If you have come to do business, head upstairs, if there's any business left to do. Why do you say that? They haven't been paying me, and I've had to work with cheap ingredients for weeks. Have you heard of a man called Bastian Darcy? <sighs> it would be difficult not to. His name is the only thing my boss talks about. Apparently, he did not pay for one of our shipments and still left with the goods. And now my boss makes me work twice as much to compensate for his losses. With ingredients I wouldn't even feed to a pig. And what did your boss do? Well, he spent every waking hour cursing his name. That's how I learned about it. What do you do here, exactly? I create and prepare complex potions. Not simple health potions, but far more subtle things. And if I'm not mistaken, things are not going the way you would want them to. The boss has always been difficult. But ever since he got ripped off, it has been a living hell. I work using leftovers thrown away by all the other alchemists, while listening to him screaming at me and everyone else all day. This is no way to live. How can a brilliant, conscientious alchemist keep working here? I am certain that any great laboratory in town would welcome you with open arms. So why continue protecting your employer? This position may not be the most rewarding these days, but it wasn't always like this. We'll leave you to your work. Uh, how kind of you. I already told you that I do not know where the man you're searching for is. You may not know where he is, but you did everything you could to find him, didn't you? What do you mean? Does this document ring a bell? You hired some debt collectors to find Mr. Darcy. How dare you rummage through my belongings? You could have taken legal action and retrieved what you were owed, but you sent some killers instead. I doubt the governor would approve. Do you want us to tell him about it? No. But please, understand me. The Darcy family is on the continent. It would take months for them to reply to my complaint. What other solution was there? My shop will not survive this. Tell us who these debt collectors are and we'll take care of it. They loiter in an alleyway of ill repute, not far from here, in the science district. That's what I feared. Probably a bunch of cutthroats. If Bastian survives... If he survives, remind him of what he owes me. Have mercy. I will repay. Hey, you! Leave this man alone! What do you want? No one asked you for your opinion, so get lost. Maybe he's friends with the weakling. Maybe. In any case, it seems like he wants to share his fate. 
You think I'm afraid? I've fought uglier people than you. Vasco, let me try to take care of this. How much money are we talking about? You're here to collect a debt, right? Between what he owes our client and our commission, it's a hefty sum. But if you want to pay in his stead, my lord, please do. I don't think you realize who you are dealing with, so let me introduce myself. My name is De Sade. I am the legate of the congregation, and I am here to save the life of one of our citizens. If you do not deliver him to me immediately, I will have no choice but to inform the governor. And you'll end up rotten in jail in no time. Damn it, they look serious. Yes, a bit too much. Listen, we don't want to get in trouble with the governor, so take him! Yeah, if our client wants to get repaid, he'll have to make an official request. Come. Thank you for your intervention. I thought these brutes would kill me. Don't mention it. It's only natural. But how did you end up in such a situation? Oh, I'm certain someone like you, who belongs to high society, will understand. There is a game table here that is attended by the best of the aristocracy. I lost the money I owed to that merchant while playing there. And since I got out with a few other debts, I had to leave the merchandise as repayment as well. But that's a mere trifle that my father would have paid for without thinking twice. I never would have thought that someone would send these types of brutes after me. What a lack of tact. In any case, I am extremely grateful to you. To whom do I have the honor of speaking? My name is Captain Vasco. Nought and sea given. It was a pleasure, sir. Thank you, De Sade. My pleasure. But why didn't you tell him who you were? But I did tell him. I was stupid. I resented everyone, and you even more, for the life I didn't get to live. You had it all, everything I thought I was entitled to. But after seeing Bastion, I realized that in the end, I was exactly who I wanted to be. A naught, and a proud one at that. I'm glad to hear it. No more regrets? No more regrets. And I certainly don't regret not being called Leandra Darcy. <laughs> Glad to see you, my friend. Can I do anything for you? What did you think of your brother? Meeting him in such circumstances must have been upsetting. I had high expectations for this encounter. I was naively hoping for some emotional reunion. And I found myself in front of a conceited and selfish idiot. Need I say more? While it was disappointing, this encounter must have allowed you to assert yourself and sweep your regrets away. This is true. And I'm very grateful to you for it. You helped me and accompanied me in a period of doubt. Thanks to you, I feel like myself. It's a service I will not forget. Did you want anything else? What do the Nort's tattoos mean? The first tattoo we get indicates whether we're sea-born or sea-given. The rest of them tell our story. They tell of everything we've been through, our rank, but also the storms we've sailed through. What do yours mean? That I am a sea given. That I sailed through a hurricane when I was but a simple sailor. That I performed several voyages as a captain without losing a single man. Does my entire curriculum really interest you? It's important to me that I get to know you better. I'm flattered, but there are other ways to do so than questioning me, you know. Did you want anything else? I must leave you. 